All right, fellas, here we are back in Pokemon Masters, and today we're going to be taking a look here at this triple feature Poke First Scout uh, that's going to be dropping tomorrow, well, two days from now, on the 27th of uh, April. Uh, we're going to be in three banners, which are really just separated by the different types of EX rolls that the new unit will be gaining, or not new unit, uh, old unit will be gaining. Uh, and I will say that these banners are not valuable. Well, okay. These banners can have value potentially if like you really want these characters you need dupes whatever because a lot of these characters in some way are good like Doge of Glory is still good Six of Giovanni is pretty good and it's pretty decent uh, and then the other banners you know Six of How and Eric of Skylar are both good Six of Lysander and um, Palmer are good right like you, these characters are legitimately good just also I mean you know low gem counts I mean these are type of banners that like you would only you're only really gonna price summon on if you have a specific character that you personally want to go for and they're also like it's a good way to beef out your box kind of right like, beef out your kit or uh, and whatever else right like you can get anniversary skylas things so how two very good characters two very diverse characters dojo gloria for a lot of debuffing and water nuking same as giovanni for a bunch of damage for ground poison and steel types emmet for rock type damage right i mean there's different ways you can beef out your box by getting on like something on these banners but eh, it's a little <laughs> that's more something that's going to be like very uh very dedicated to a specific type of person, in my opinion. Like, it depends really on what you personally want. Also, there's some discourse going around. Absol tried to clear it up a bit on Twitter uh, that people think these may be uh, Pokefair Select Scouts. These are not Select Scouts, because, for one, hold on, let's just look here. So, this banner, Emmett, uh, this one here. <laughs> oh, my God. I think this... Uh, yeah, I think, I think this is a normal, there's a normal banner here. Isn't there a normal version of these banners? Um, yeah, there is normal versions of these banners, so th that's what we're talking about. But there's also a paid version of these banners that costs 5,000 paid gems for a 25-unit multi. Uh, and it gives you a support, or sorry, it gives you a roll cake depending on which type of banner it is. This is not a select scout. This does not have the word select implied. It is not set, stated anywhere to be a select scout. And it is, is not worth it, just for that simple fact. If this was a select scout, obviously, depending on like what character you need, it, it could be good. And of course, you get a roll kick from it. The only reason this is a 5,000 page gem banner is because they made it 25 units to, uh, as a multi, and then they gave you a support roll kick, or a specific roll kick. That's literally the only reason it's paid. It is, this, this banner is not worth it. Also, it drops tomorrow, again, on the 27th, and then leaves uh, May 9th. So keep that in mind. These banners last about two weeks. So, yeah, with that pretty much out of the way, don't summon on the paid gem version unless you're like a whale. That is literally the only reason you should summon on that banner. The roll kicks are not worth it. The battle rally is really a good method of getting roll kicks as well as the other daily methods and whatever else we get for roll cake coins. It's not that bad. It, the, the struggle is not that real, <laughs> all right? It's not worth the money. That 25 unit multi could easily give you something. It could very just as easily give you nothing. And let's just move on to the kits now. All right, so let's just get this over with here and move on to the kits. We'll start out here with Emmett, of course. Uh, he is a rock striker, <clears throat> for anyone who does not know. He's a rock striker, at least back in July, June, something like that, of 2021. Pretty old, but still pr uh, pretty strong, I would say. Uh, he's got himself Healthy Strength 5, which increases attack by 50% when HP is uh, above 50%, which is really good, for sure. Right, that propels his attack stat to, like, over 500, like, 550 area something like that at six star ex obviously level 150 does help that out too uh so he's got a very good attack stat he's got sand superiority as well powering up his moves in a sandstorm and protecting him from damage in a sandstorm pretty much just surging sand with extra steps hit the gas five increasing the extra power of stone edge and rock slide so he does have 160 base uh, five base power stone edge 172 base power rock slide very very nice for sure uh, his stats are also just in base pretty respectable, speed's good, HP's good, defenses could afford to be a lot better, but he does gain the support EX roll, that is why he is on this banner, because he got the support EX roll, and that does help out his defenses a lot, giving him over 200 defenses, uh, and like, 800 health, Maybe, probably a little bit less than that, but still, a lot of, a lot of health, and, uh, very respectable defenses. He's got Dire Hit Plus for maxing out his crit and his trainer move, which raises his attack by 6, accuracy by 2, lowers defense by 1, and applies damage guard to him. Uh, and then he also reduces Sync Countdown by 1 in a Sandstorm, which you do want to run him in a Sandstorm due to Sand Superiority. He can still hit pretty hard without Sand, but you definitely do want it. 
uh, and mostly skimming over the grid. One out of five is nothing crazy. Two out of five is equally as mediocre, outside of like first aid four maybe. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then three out of five, he has uh, Head Start one, Healthy Power Up one, Crit Strike two on uh, Stone Edge, and then Aggravation one on Rock Slide, Soft It Up one, and Sand Blaster, and Sand Sink. Support X roll is mostly useful for sand sink because it causes sand on uh, the sink move right, so that does give you viability in using uh, his sink move because otherwise his sink move kind of sucks. He has no multipliers other than uh, sand blaster and like weathered warrior as a lucky skill, so less than 100% total nuking multipliers is not fantastic. Uh, DPS is fine, right? Stone Edge and Rock Slide can hit for good damage. Stone Edge has Critical Strike 2. He's got healthy power up. Plus, you know, the damage guard in the first day 4 will help him with maintaining uh, a solid amount of health at least, and preferably full, so you can have this activated. Uh, so I think he'll be fine on that front. And of course, that star one plus the uh, sync countdown one on, minus one on the trainer move does give you some decent sync ramping ability. Aggravation one on rock slide for flinches, soften up one for guaranteed crits on the sync move so you don't have to constantly reset. That type of stuff is pretty nice for Emmett. Uh, and I will be showcasing him at 3 to 5 with the EX roll. He does get Poker Fair tiles, which is nice for sure. I need to see. Okay, I don't have it pulled up here. I do need to pull it up. Uh, expanded sync grids. Emmett does, of course, get fair tiles again, uh, as stated. His fair tiles are nothing crazy. Rod right on track, hit and heal is nice for maintaining healthy abilities. Again, combine that with first aid four, he can try and maintain good health, uh, which is of course useful and almost necessary for having healthy strength activated. Otherwise, Emmett is going to be doing a lot less, a <laughs> lot less damage as going to be noticed. Uh, he does have vigilance as well, protecting crits. Again, just another method to prevent damage. Defense Crush nine. This actually does actively help out his damage. It could be AOE with Rock Slide or single target with Stone Edge. That is definitely really nice for sure, uh, and a very good way to buff his damage. I'm not sure which node that will be. Whether it will be uh, at the top above this node or if it will be at the bottom but i mean either way it's going to be a pretty easy node to access and i would probably recommend picking it up for any five out of five emmet havers uh, i do like emmet a lot but i don't think i'm gonna go to five out of five for that i just don't think it's necessary uh, and then unflappable uh two out of five and yeah, two, uh, unflappable at two out of five uh and Tra uh, trainer of hand heal at 2 out of 5, and then he's got sync damage guard at 4 out of 5, and uh, mighty physical boost on trainer move at 5 out of 5. Uh, the physical moves next is not that useful, really, at all. I mean, the damage increase is not going to be that notable for a 5 out of 5 tile. It's not really worth picking up. Sync damage guard is pretty helpful, relatively speaking, because, of course, he is negating uh, an AoE move already with the damage guard here, and you can also now sync and also get damage guard from that. So he does have some pretty funny... Uh, mechanisms in order to just prevent damage on himself and heal off damage despite being a striker. So maintaining his good health, good for uh, healthy strength 5, and potentially, I guess, healthy power up, but really that's a lot less notable. So you can do some funny uh, tanking stuff with uh, Emmett. Uh, going back to his EX roll support, this does, it, the support X roll, in my opinion, is mostly it's there to keep him healthy, right? Buffing his defenses and his HP, so he stays above half health. But it's also a good side effect to have Sand Sync uh, be a viable node on his grid. Because otherwise, I mean, it, the biggest thing for this is that this makes him a, vi a, pre a very viable partner for Neo Champion Silver. It allows you to use Emmet Sync move to get both in support EX as well as get in the extra sand, and it allows Silver to save his Sync move to extend sand later in the battle, uh, so you don't have to worry about running someone like Ingo or Variety Giovanni, who that's not a bad combination, definitely. But this does allow you to make a more rock-based uh, team for sure, which is pretty helpful, I would say. Being able to have multiple ways to set sand and also have it not be uh, hindering your ability to set sand later on in the battle is very nice, right? Like maybe Paolo, Neo Champion, Silver, and Emmett will be a strong rock core. I don't know. Uh, especially with so, uh, with um, Emmett also being able to debuff enemy defense with Defense Crush, being AoE with Rock Slide. That can be a very good uh, method of actually providing a lot of strength to this potential core here. And also just being a solid rock damage dealer in general. Is the Great Expansion fantastic? No. It still keeps his nuke as pretty bad. His DPS is not fantastic, but his utility definitely went up quite, uh, a decent chunk. Being able to now provide support EX, being able to provide uh, sand on the sink nuke uh, combined with Paolo and Silver, and also Variety Giovanni if you want to try that out. Also does help out with Ingo too, right? Setting sand that way. Uh, and uh, also just allowing for more general survivability. Definitely very, very nice. So not overall uh, overall not too bad for Emmett for sure maybe I will five out of five them I don't know <laughs> I'll have to look at my strike candies after this and see 
So moving on, we'll go on to Dojo Gloria. Uh, definitely a very renouncing pair for sure. Definitely very hyped up wherever she is, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, she did not get fair tiles. Uh, now she got them earlier and her fair tiles are not that great. Just being honest. Um, Dojo Gloria's biggest thing is the fact that she's got for one, good stats, right? Six star AX, right? She's got four, 500, over 500 attack, solid speed, solid defenses, good HP. Overall good stats. Surging Strikes, which is a 48 base power move that effectively turns into, what, 144, I think? 144 power uh, at 5 out of 5. If, yeah, this would, this would be... Like a fucking, I don't know, eat something. It's, it's, it's a lot of damage, right? <laughs> it's a lot of damage. There's like 132 power here, I think. Uh, multiply 44 by 3. I don't know my multiples of 44 and 3, okay? But either way, the big thing with this is she's able to debuff defense. Punishing Strike 3, or Punishing Strike 9, which debuffs enemy defense uh, per time a move lands. So Iron Head debuffs it once, Close Combat debuffs defense once, but Surging Strikes debuffs it three times because the move hits three times in a row. It's also got guaranteed crits, which is very nice for, you know, enemies that may prevent themselves uh, from crits or making, you know, having setups that uh, allow you to not bring a crit support, which is nice. Also critical sync, so that's equally as cool. Uh, she's also got recharging strike four, has, uh, had a 50% chance to charge gauge, making her a relatively consistent gauge uh, managing character, so she'll be fine on that front. She's got iron head for flinching, close combat for fighting damage, and her trainer move which reduces sync countdown and raises her attack, so she's very self-sufficient in her crit uh, ability to do damage without uh, needing crit buffs with her surging strikes, as well as maxing her attack and doing sync ramping with the sync countdown. Very helpful for some other cores, maybe like Sigma Suit May, or uh, maybe maybe new champion Serena, right? So you can get a lot of sync ramping potential in. It's definitely very nice for sure. Also, giving a red start one will just allow you to skip a whole uh, turn, which is good. Uh, she does have max moves as well, G Max Rapid Flow, which is also a guaranteed crit. This time it also acts as piercing blows, being able to go through passes that protect uh, the enemy from crits, protect them from uh, damage reduction, and ignores damage guard, and also max steel spike and max knuckle for just general attack and defense raising and steel and fighting damage. Do note that Iron Head and Close Combat do require crit buffs because it is only an ability of Surging Strikes to have the attack be guaranteed to be crits. I don't know why they built it like that. You could have just given her guaranteed crits in general, uh, and she would not have been much more broken than she already was. And still is very good, for sure. She's also got the innate nuke here with enemies having uh, needing defense debuffs, which of course is always very easy to activate because of Punishing Strike. And of course, with how good water partner uh, her water partners are, just because of how good water is, she's of course still going to be really strong, right? Her nuke is definitely surpassed by Neo Champion Serena, because, duh. Same EX roll as well, so that doesn't have any differentiating abilities there. Uh, she can still work well with Nessa. I'm pretty sure Nessa's nuke also beats hers out as well, just because of how strong Nessa is. But also, she's a good enabler of Nessa's nuke simultaneously. So, if you want to maybe focus on Gloria for damage, like DPS-wise, and then have Nessa be your main nuker, that's a relatively viable setup. Only thing that I think uh, Gloria is at a hindrance of is the fact that she's physical water, which inherently is flawed because all most like 99% of relevant water units are special or special catering, like Dahlia. Like she does debuff defense, but that's for grass damage, and most of her stuff is when is water based is special oriented. So that can be a little bit annoying for maybe trying to enable Gloria right, because of course Gloria does want like things like uh, defense debuffs, which she can't apply, or like physical moves next or whatever. You know, Signature Chris is special oriented support. Even Neo Champion Calum, he has he sets uh, water zone, not water zone, rain. Uh, and buff special moves next instead of physical moves next. So you've got yourself a few caveats there with running Gloria as a physical character, but still, even outside of it, she is definitely really strong. And in the grid, uh, one out of five is nothing really. Two out of five uh, is just a few different utility things, like super effective damage, which I guess is relatively helpful for Iron Head in close combat. Double down for a little bit more powerful nuke, but really just minor things. Three out of five, she gets everything else with Relentless, Insult to Injury, Hunter's Instinct, Tripping Strike. Uh, doesn't she get Cakewalk? No, she just gets another Relentless. Okay, so she doesn't care about this much. Okay, that's fair. Uh, as well as Sync Nodes, of course, a Stacking Strike, uh, whatever else. She gets a few other things, but those are probably the most notable. Uh, Endurance and Adrenaline are fine. Max Double Down is fine. Iron Head Aggravation is good for flinching in the gauntlet and just in general. Uh, Relentless just helps out with her nuke, giving her 200% total multipliers besides Double Down. Uh, and of course, being Tech EX can also give you that 380 base power sync move, 
going to be a very hard hitting nuke for sure very easy to activate as well just needing defense debuffs which she's going to be doing anyway insult to injury and hunter's instinct for dps so her surging strikes will actually be doing a lot of damage again bringing more viability to that potential combination of gloria and nessa nessa being your nuker gloria being your damage dealer it can work uh, and i'd say that literally all gloria needs nowadays is just a good water support that is physical catering because like Cygnus and chris is good they work together just they work together well but of course the, there is the fact that chris is a special oriented buffer not physical which is not bad but still it would definitely gloria could definitely appreciate an actual uh buffer for herself like you could run over with argenta just fine and then run another like water character like neo champion serena and maybe just miss out on rain or i don't know dahlia or something and you could make it work but you know gloria could still obviously benefit a lot from a more synergistic partner but still, she's got good damage, spe uh, speedy buffs with tripping strike, stacking strike with buffs, uh, which buffs her crit, so this is her way of maxing crit if you do need that self-sufficiency, which can be helpful for enabling Iron Head in close combat uh, damage, because of course they do need crit buffs in order to be relatively relevant <laughs> in dealing damage, and uh, steel spike and max knuckle as well. So crit buffs are nice, uh, and yeah, so Gloria's got a good nuke. I don't think Support X really helps her out that much. It does increase her bulk, which is not really something she was exactly hurting for anyway. I, I, I don't really see the biggest thing with her getting Support. I don't know why they, why she got it. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure she got Support, right? Yeah, she, she's on this banner. I, I, don't, I don't really understand it, why she got Support, just for the simple fact that you don't really need to sync with her first anyway. Her, her, her first sync nuke is not very likely to do that much damage anyway, unless... You know, if you're, especially because if you're ramping, she's, she's going to get to her second scene move by two turns, which is just going to be the turns that took to buff her stats. So the enemies are going to have no debuffs. She's going to have no power on the sync move. It's just going to be a relatively weak sync move that gives you support EX. It's extra damage, sure, but it's really not all that different from having a support EX already just sync. And honestly, it'd be better just to have a support EX with like the sprint EX roll sync instead. Or like if Sigan Suit Chris gets the field EX roll, having her sync instead and set rain and extend it. In my opinion, that would just be better. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's good, though. I mean, I mean, it's still a buff, right? There, it's not exactly like any EX roll is going to be making the unit actively worse, but I just failed to see how it impacts her positively when things like Sprint existed uh, or Field or even Strike would have been a bit more relevant than support but either way whatever it's fine it's not a bad upgrade uh so have, have fun uh dojo gloria fans she's still good either way even in base kit she is still very relevant today so no complaints here uh let's look at signet uh, also hold on just by the way impervious and in interference immunity head start one restoring strike head start one just enables her to run like critical strike two or weathered warrior as a lucky skill instead of having to run head start one as a lucky skill and then restoring strike Restoring HP, I mean, that's mostly probably just going to be good for Gauntlet Solos, and that's about it. That does help with her longevity, right? The support X roll does help in that front, but, I, again, probably mostly just a Gauntlet Solo thing to enable a few more of them. I don't really see too, the a massive amount of relevance in it, uh, and impervious in an interference immunity. Why is this a 5 out of 5 tile? That is brain dead. Sure. I, again, I don't think her fair tiles are that great, but also I don't think I need to say that. All right, and going to Cygnus to Giovanni. Uh, why did he get support too? Whatever. Uh, so Cygnus to Giovanni's big thing is that he is able to deal massive, massive damage and just spamming high-powered attacks. That is Giovanni's big gimmick. He effectively functions. He functions very similarly to Variety Giovanni. If you know, he's the more recent unit, I figure more people probably know about his abilities. They both function effectively the same thing. And he also functions very similarly to Rose, He's effectively a worse version of Rose. Rose does steel, ground, and rock damage. Giovanni does ground, steel, and poison damage. Very minor difference, but the ground and steel damage, I'm pretty sure Rose still does better anyway. Maybe ground Giovanni does better now, but still. Rose does. <laughs> Rose and Giovanni are super comparable if you know how their kits work. Uh, so yeah. Giovanni stats, 415 attack, uh, defenses are pretty meager, HP's fine, the uh, speed's alright, really just his attack's good, not even that great, but it's good, uh, and level 150, of course, does increase that a bit. His stats are nothing really, like, to write home about, but they're fine, they definitely uh, suffice for sure. Uh, especially when you consider that his Mega Kick is 300 base power and a 4 gauge move. Also, it, he has Giovanni's Cunning, which moves never miss, and it makes uh, normal moves ground type, that's why Mega Kick is not normal type, obviously. Uh, so, 
this is funny because let's just compare Giovanni to uh, another unit they released literally like uh, seven months later or something. This boy who has like 60 more base power, but it takes double the amount of time in order for him to actually power off his attack. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit funny to me. Anyway, so yeah, Giovanni, he's got 300 base power mega kick, no strings attached, it is a 300 base power move. Iron Tail, 237 base power, yes, this hits hard, about as hard as Hyper Beam slash Giga Impact, has a 30% chance to debuff defense, and then Poison Jab, 165 base power, 30% chance to poison, voila. He's got a straight move, which raises his attack by 6. It applies critical hit next and super effective next. On top of having a max move of each type, being able to buff special defense, defense, or special attack, and doing 480 power, you know, a piece. Just a very hard hitter, straightforward, no, nothing else, just no strings attached. And of course, max double down 5, powering up max moves that are super effective, <coughs> and hit the gas 5, uh, increasing gauge slots needed and powering up moves, which is why these moves are so high powered. Enough said. So you can see Giovanni is just a hard-hitting ground unit. There's nothing else to say there. Uh, I mean, 415 attack, 300 base power mega kick. They're going to be hitting pretty hard. I don't think I don't think his Giov uh, Giovanni's damage is super insane anymore. But I mean, it's still good. And of course, his big thing is being able to cater to being on type, uh, super effective against three different types. That was mostly his big appeal, especially because back then ground and poison sucked and steel was fine. Like, again, look at ground types. This is in release order. Look at what ground types were looking like back then. It was Maxi, who had never rerun up to that point, and Cynthia, who was still pretty mediocre. And, of course, Bertha was new, but she was a nuker. So, yeah, Giovanni was definitely mostly catered to that audience, and Poison was in pretty much a worse state than ground. So, yeah, that's what he did. Steel still had stuff like uh, Komodo Grimsley, though, so Steel wasn't doing too bad. But anyway, yeah. Uh, looking at his grid, 1 out of 5 is nothing crazy. Training with NPR, I guess, for the critical hit next is fine. Do consider he cannot buff his own crit in any capacity until 3 out of 5. So, you do want to bring a crit support or end the battles within, like, 2.5 turns, <laughs> I guess. He's got max super preparation, surging sand 2, super duper effective 2, double down 3, uh, poison jab, super duper effective 3, and iron tail honor roll. Just a few different abilities that make him a bit better at doing on type damage with each of his abilities for super duper effective 2 for all of the damage, uh, super duper effective 3 on poison jab for even more damage, double down 3 for a super effective nuke, honor roll on iron tail for defense debuffs, surging sand 2 for a general power buff, which is definitely more helpful. That would mean that you would have to pretty much uh, combine him with either Ingo, if you are, uh, you know, an, old, an older player, or obviously nowadays you do have things like Paolo, Neo Champion Silver, and Variety Giovanni, who can all set sand and are pretty much better partners for him, especially because uh, Silver, Lyra, Neo Champion Silver, Special Costume Lyra, and Signature Giovanni are a pretty good uh, triple Johto setup despite Silver being rock and Giovanni being ground uh, and Lyra being ground, they all synergize very, very well with each other. So it, it does actually end up working out, and it's definitely a good buff for uh, Variety Giovanni, for sure. Uh, max Super Preparation, applying Super Effect on next, right? I mean, that doesn't, doesn't need to be said much. This does enhance his damage of these types quite a bit. Again, mostly catering to on type outside of the Surging Sand. Uh, just makes him a little bit better against Ground, Steel, and Poison Weak enemies. Which he was already pretty good against anyway. Unless you're not, like, ultimate battles, but still... It, I don't, I don't think he's going to be beating too many of those. Oh, maybe. Whatever. Either way, he gets, uh, at 3 to 5, he gets critical crit 9, max quake power up, max steel spike power up, super sinker, furious brain, or sorry, furious brawn on poison jab, max ooze, and then haymaker. So he does get a relatively decent uh, nuke, I guess, with haymaker and double down if super effective. Powering up the max moves as well is very nice. Uh, po furious Brawn and Poison Jab. Combine that with Super Duper Effective 2 and Poison Jab, Super Duper Effective 3. And you are getting a lot of multipliers for Poison Jab. Beating his on-type Poison Damage is going to be pretty impressive, all things considered. Uh, and especially with that max move as well. Uh, and then Critical Crit 9 does mean that he is getting uh, guaranteed crits because he applies Critical Hit next uh, whenever his attacks on crits so you're getting an infinite cycle of critical hit next meaning that his sync moves are going to be guaranteed to be crits his dps is going to be guaranteed to be crits it effectively combines crit buffs and soften up one together which is pretty nice honestly so that's definitely not a bad node to pick up uh or of course alternative alternatively you could just bring a crit support which you can do that you don't have to do that whichever you prefer to do uh also with this he did get uh fair tiles as well and I will say that they were there. I don't know why uh, they, he got what he got. He got Natural Remedy, which is 
generic two out of five stuff as well as quick cure just preventing status conditions and status changes at a certain amount of times uh, he's got maximum defense down on the enemy which does enhance his damage a little bit a little bit quicker can be alternated out for def actual defensive debuffs but it does just directly help out the damage which is nice so sure i guess it could be a viable node to pick up it is four out of five uh he also got max countdown three out of five out of five that does allow you to skip a whole sync cycle assuming you can quad q your next move which can be helpful for sync acceleration uh, because ground types could definitely use that ability i'm pretty sure giovanni is our only example of sync acceleration on a ground type maybe like an occasional head start one or adrenaline one or like a weird like shifty sands or some like q cutter type thing but for the most part, that is our biggest representation of Sync Countdown on a ground type, it seems. Uh, he's also got Blue Gauge Refresh 9, because of course his, one of his bigger things is Gauge. He has 3 4 gauge moves and a relatively decent but not fantastic speed stat, so having an ability to help mitigate uh, gauge issues is nice, but it's mostly just quality of life and you are sacrificing some grid energy for that, uh, which could be used to potentially get a little bit of other you know, damaging abilities, which is really what he kind of does want nowadays. And then I also got first aid six for literally no reason, restoring HP. I mean, that just does help enhance him for better self-sufficiency and healing for any harder hitting content, like an ultimate battle. Does help his longevity in that area, especially combined uh, uh, combined with uh, whatever the hell he had. I, I don't even remember at this point. <laughs> I think it was in here, like, you know, the natural remedy and quick cure, whatever, helping out his uh, defensive side. For some reason, they wanted to make uh, this guy a little bit more defense. All right, yeah, the support X roll. Duh. They buffed his defenses for some reason. <laughs> sure, man. They gave him support EX roll for whatever reason, buffing his defenses to like 1, 2, 16, right? No, 2, 13. Like 2, 13 in both defenses, uh, nearly 800 HP, over 800 HP at level 150, right? Uh, and then, of course, getting the support EX roll function, giving those those two sync moves on the, or two sync buffs on the sync move. His sync move's not that great anyway, and he doesn't really have any reason to use it. But I mean, sure, it's just extra damage. It's, it's kind of like a case of Dojo Gloria. Yeah, it, it's pretty much just a case of Dojo Gloria, but except now the sync move is AoE, and it does actually do quite a bit of damage. So it does, it does give you value in using Giovanni's sync move early. Uh, it's better than Gloria's, in my opinion, for the simple fact that Gloria does not is not going to have it activated at all, and it's, just, and it's going to be single target. But at the very least, Giovanni's sync move is AoE, so that will be doing some good damage to the sides, which he does lack any form of spread damage otherwise. So being able to damage the sides for a reason other than just using his striker sync move is pretty decent, I guess. Uh, and again, he's for some reason they're trying to cater to his self-sufficiency in healing with first aid four, as well as buffing his defenses with the support X roll. Why? I don't know. I think he still needs damage, but sure, it can work. Uh, and I do want to say that. I mean, uh, even outside of all of that, his damage is still going to be pretty solid, right? Mega kick with surging sand two is still going to hit pretty hard uh, off of a relatively decent attack stat. Just not nearly as hard as it would be otherwise. And again, they are catering to super effective damage, which he will demolish ground steel and poison weak stages respectively no not going to dispute that at all uh but yeah that's pretty much it realistically regarding the new fair tiles and the new ex rolls i wouldn't say any of these characters are necessarily worth the ex roll but they are definitely viable options uh if in your own right if you do, do like these characters i think emmett may benefit the most because his big thing is wanting to have above 50 percent health that does directly help him out there and he does get the sand sink so his utility actually does increase quite a bit gloria and giovanni in my opinion just seem to get it just because giovanni does get a reason to actually use his sink move early on getting in that aoe damage which again he is pretty much prevented from doing spread damage uh, outside of that because he has single target moves and then gloria benefits probably from it the least but I mean, I guess it's good in the gauntlet, helping her stats and her HP recovery, right? I, I guess. Sure, man. Sure. But whatever. That's my review for the uh, the first banner. I've got to go over the other two now. It is currently 10 p.m. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I'll see you later. I hope you all enjoyed. Good luck if you're going to be summoning. Please don't summon on the 5,000 page gem banner. That's a scam. <laughs> I'll be EX rolling Emmett and showcasing him eventually. I don't know when. But yeah, I'll see you all later.